live talk for me called What Now? It's been going pretty well. We're like, I don't know, three, four weeks in. And, uh, hey. And <clears throat> people are actually adapting to the situation right now, so it's not as crazy anymore as in the beginning, but we are still adapting. So, oh, look at all my friends come in. How are y'all doing? Everybody's still safe? Everybody's still healthy? I'm waiting for day one to join me. Day one is a producer from the West Coast who has produced for a whole bunch of people. And um, he's going to give us our thoughts. Ah, I miss you too. I need to get my hair done. <laughs> I was going to hit you up today talking about how do I do my hair my myself. Shout out to my hairdresser. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Had to do something for this. Okay, day, let's go. I'm in. Thanks everyone for joining. So if you don't know who day one is, super producer from the West Coast, who's done stuff for a whole bunch of people, including um, Snoop, Corrupt, um, you name it, he's done it. So I have talked to a whole bunch of people uh, this week I spoke to a touring DJ, I spoke to a comedian who lost all his gigs, I spoke to uh, a songwriter, and I spoke to um, uh, a rapper. So it's only fair to speak to a producer as well to see how they're coping with it. You would think they could still do what they want to do, but maybe not. So I am curious to know how everyone is coping in this situation creatively. Um, shout out to my sister and uh, thank you for hooking me up with <laughs> with the cool photos uh, That was really dope. Thanks for coming in here as well. My sister is a creative artist as well And uh, she is day okay day one has joined the conversation and uh, Let's see if this all works <laughs> Hey, hey How are you? <laughs> I'm tapped in, man. I'm, I'm glad to be here, but I'm, I mean, I'm I'm here online. Yeah. What up, hey? Sleep in. Yeah, I slept. I slept in. I was up pretty late, and then I slept in like most of the day so far. My whole, this is my first thing I'm doing all day. This is my first my thing whole I'm doing. Schedule is is messed up, man. All it's these late on. night talks. I feel like I'm doing the Tonight Show. Um, it's just yeah. I just stay up because after the talks, there's so much feedback, and I'm just up to like two, three a.m. And I'm like, what's going on, man? My, but <clears throat> hey, we're being creative. When my brain starts going at night, I can't go to sleep. So these late night talks yeah. are really not good for me. <laughs> See, for for me, it's like it's like almost the same thing, except like. At nighttime, I just get more creative. I just start feeling like I have no no other outside inter interference, so I can just like just do whatever I feel like I need to do, you know. Because right. in the daytime, it's a lot going on. You got regular life stuff that happens, and then you have uh, people calling your phone and you know business stuff. You got to do everything on, you know what I mean? So it's a little harder to do. But at night, it's like no one's really contacting you, no one's reaching out, so you have a lot more time. Well, I have a lot more time to do whatever I need to do, to catch up on work that I missed during the day. So right. My days for are me, long, though, for honestly. me, it's different because, you know, with everybody being on the other side with the time differences for people that just locked in, I'm in Amsterdam. Um, when yeah. when stuff hits like nighttime over here, that's daytime on your side. And so a whole bunch of people will still hit me up like my honestly, my work day is like 24 seven with all these different time zones. But these talks yeah. definitely boosted my creative side as well. Um, which I wasn't really aiming for, but it's great that yeah. it happens. It's a great side effect. So let's so, get into it. So what yeah, are you doing, so okay? I was just telling people, I spoke to a touring DJ who lost like a complete six week tour in Japan. I spoke to a comedian who lost all his gigs. I spoke to a songwriter who that's a whole different perspective. And I spoke to a rapper yesterday. So you being a producer, most people would think, you know, you can still do what you want to do despite the world now being in a different setting. How, what was the biggest impact for you uh, being on lockdown and quarantine? Because producers are usually already in quarantine. Yeah, like it's, it's a normal thing for us to be locked in. Like for me as a producer being locked in, it's like, it was, it was second nature. I, I was like, y'all tripping. But I understand the world, the world as a whole, like it's, it's just a, 
it's an uncomfortable situation to be put in. But as a producer, I'm still able to work from home. I can still email stuff back and forth. Um, it's not as complicated. But what is complicated is the collaboration part of it. Like, right. me, myself, as a producer, I like to be in the studio. I like to be in the session. You know, and it, and it's, you know, it's harder right now because no one really wants to be around each other, you know, as much. And in studio settings, you know, sometimes we don't realize, but sometimes studio settings have a lot of people involved. So, right. you know, they have this limit of 10 or 50 people, or whatever it is. But when you have a studio with multiple studios going at the same time, it's usually a lot of people in, in that setting. So everyone, everyone's kind of on lockdown doing their thing from home. So, um, so that has been the biggest for impact for you? Like, that has been really the biggest impact. I mean, that and then plus a lot of artists and a lot of people that are that are entrepreneurs don't know exactly where their next money's coming from right now. Right. So it's a little stagnant. So usually I would be backed up with like four or five projects to mix. Like I could be here mixing. But right now everybody's kind of slow on mixing because they're not sure, you know, what their what their goal is or where their money's right. coming from. So they're what trying the to radish. Is. Yeah. That and they're trying to they're trying to ration their money correctly so they could they could still survive and buy toilet paper. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So <laughs> if they gave me if they gave me all the money for mixing, I would I would mix their records, but then you know right. they would be out of some money. So I understand, but that's the only other thing that's like a downside. Like other than that, it's real easy to kind of like just work from home. Um, the other the other day, I did a session with two of my other boys that are producers just so we could collab and keep that energy going. Yeah. Uh, we just had to do it online and just email stuff back and forth. Um, so it's not that complicated for us, but it is, you do miss that element of like connecting one-on-one -on -one right. in, in that studio setting because it's, it's nothing else like that. Like, Well, that creates an actual yeah. vibe, the, the collaboration, uh, in my opinion. Yeah, I don't, man. you know, necessarily, I'm not a fan of, uh, you know, sending files back and forth if you have never seen the person, but it is it is a great way to still keep going and do things especially you know and it's I mean, a good way to break the ice yeah and also you know if you don't live around the corner from each other and you want to work with international collaborations then that is you know most of the time how it works uh until somebody yeah. has the paycheck or you know the, the advance to go somewhere <laughs> um yeah so how like right you, right now go ahead no um how do you um, so the, the part that you're missing out on right now, how are you compensating for that? Or how are you, how are you substituting for that? Um, you know, it's funny. It's like, it's like, but at the same time, okay, okay, let me say this. So I had to compensate for it by, because what you, what you miss is working with someone that's new. It's hard to work with someone right. that's new in it, without being in the same environment. That's ultimately hard unless you already know their work and they know your work and it's just like, let's do something. So I've been compensating it by doing work with artists that I already have previously worked with or worked with before a lot. Right. Um, and right now, everybody's really creative because everyone's at home. So, you know, reaching out to certain artists that I always worked with before, you know, we've started working on projects right now. As of right now, I have like three new projects that started since this quarantine. Right. So and you got a lot to kinda, put out later on. Yeah, right now I have a lot to put out, and right now everybody's home listening to listening to music, needing new stuff to hear, needing new stuff to listen to, needing new music to write to. Um, right now is a good time for producers to put out instrumental albums. Um, That's true. Yeah. Because, because a lot of artists are at home and need something to write with. You know, right now is a good time for producers to email them them beat packs out to the artists that they've been trying to get a hold of, but just you know can't couldn't tie down. Right now is the time for you to email those people and and send them batches of beats over and, uh, you know, just send over what you have to see what they can create right now, where it's a lot of downtime because you got to yeah, understand. Still, there's no, yeah. yeah. There's no touring. There's no, there's no interviews. There's no, there's none of that going Nothing. on right now. So right yeah. now, even the major artists are sitting at home, like, yo, send me some beats. Yeah. <laughs> so right now is a good time to get them packed together, go through your beats, see what you got that's open create those beat packs for those people and send them out. I don't care who it is. Right. So while well, you were saying a lot of people are being creative, but there's also a part of the, the creative industry that is just frustrated and panicking about their income loss. And uh, maybe they're at a, a creative block. How do you, yeah. did you have people in your circle that you had to motivate? Like as a producer, like, Hey man, if I send you this new stuff, do you get motivated or inspired or? Yes. 
Yes, I've been trying to keep everybody motivated by just sending out stuff like, yo, let's work on this. Or, you know, let's finish this idea we started, but we never finished it. You right. have to just kind of double down on everything that you were doing before and revisit. Like, I went back and revisited, I, re, I went back and revisited an old record that I, I produced like maybe four or five years ago. I found the old session. It was just a hook on an on instrumental. Um, shout out to my homegirl, AJ. Um, I mixed the hook. I sent it to Paul Wall. He jumped, he jumped on it, did two verses on it. And now we have a song. Yeah, that's and that's just something that I had just sitting on my hard drive. And I was just like, yo, this is kind of fly. And, and that, I sent it to him and he happened. loved it. That never would have never, happened. I never would have said, no. If no. it wasn't in the, if we weren't in these times. Um, right. Quick shout out to May. I saw her coming in here. Uh, thanks for joining us. Um, May, yeah, so, use your time wisely. That's thanks tight. to everyone joining yeah. us, by the way. Uh, if you have yeah. questions, throw them in there. I'll try to, to uh -huh. see if I can catch them. Um, oh, that's the homie. Oh, my gosh. I haven't seen him in forever. Yo, how are you doing? Um, so yeah, get back to the conversation. So uh, one of the, the things that has been said in all these conversations that I've been having this week is um, the taking the time out not only to be creative, but to also reflect, um, slow down because we are in a fast paced industry. Um, yeah. Also, uh, really know your business as an artist, whether you're producer, DJ or uh, an actor or a singer, um, really learn and study your business, not just your yeah. talent, but also, you know, the business side of, of you because you're a brand. Of what you do. Um, True. So how, do you, how do you think about that? What are, you, what are your thoughts on that? I feel like that's a really good idea. Like right now at this, at this time, you know, it's a good time to like look at those old, those YouTube videos that you've been neglecting to watch about, you know, how to do this in the business or how to do this in the industry or even good interviews. Like now is a good time to kind of retap in and, and retouch those services about, you know, motivational um, opportunities that you may let slip by because you're so caught up in the, in the right. world moving as it moves. Right now you have a lot of downtime to kind of downsize that, you know, focus on your business, think of different marketing terms and, and right. different things that you can do to put your product the DJs and stuff because you know right now everybody's like I'm saying at home so everyone that's including the DJs and the promoters and everybody so right now is a good time for you to be like okay how do I strategize what I already have you know you might already be sitting yes. on some product that you haven't put out yet that you've been, been neglecting to put out because the time wasn't right or whatever but right now it's kind of like now is the time for you to kind of like okay double down on everything you've done go back revisit it see what's what and see if you can make something out of that. We gotta, we gotta make something out of nothing. And that's what we do as being yeah. creatives. We, yes. we create, you know what I mean? We create something out of nothing. And right now we have nothing. So, right. and, and that's just not even in music. That's even in people that's that are actors, comedians. That's everything. Any, anybody that wants to, anybody that can jump on this camera and interview somebody, like even what right. you're doing right now, like this is like what you're doing right now, you probably wouldn't have done had this not have ever happened. I you may have not, never done no. it. And you know, anyway, and this is my is still, first love. So for me, yeah. actually doing these talks, it makes me feel alive, even though you're stuck in the house. Uh, this is yeah. what I do. Um, and the yeah. feedback, it, it came it came forth out of motivating people that are at home, you know, with their hands in their hair, thinking, oh, what to do. Um, it, and this is a way to basically give them the information, give them the knowledge, the inspiration, and the tools. Really? To, yes. to do what they need to do in order to keep moving forward. It doesn't have to be at 100 miles per hour, but even if you go one step, it's better than sitting still only worrying about the losses you may have when there's so much to gain. Um, yes. So many people are talking about, oh, live, everybody's doing live, I'm not gonna do live. Well, I'm doing live because why not, <laughs> you know? Why not? Why would, if your audience, if your audience is on, you have to go where your audience is. And right now, your audience is on. They're it's online because they don't have nothing yeah, else to do. It's online. Yeah, it's essential. It's essential. I mean, they're online. They're on TV. They're on YouTube. Anything right. to help pass the time. Anything to help exactly. pass the time. Because nobody's yeah. gonna say, "Oh, I'm not gonna do a show because everybody's doing a show." What? I'm not gonna make money because everybody's making money. That's not <laughs> the mindset that you should have right now. And if it no, works, right now you should have. Yeah, right now you should have the go getter. You got to have that go getter mind state of like, well, I'm going to get something. Something's going right. to happen for me right now because it's a void. And if you can fill a void, 
fill a void and you can get rich that's, like that's just how it goes that's really what it is it, it's not even th these talks are not even about me although i got really good feedback on this and people are happy that's what i was you know going for it could have gone another way it could have just been a total flop and i would have at least tried it and i would yeah. go on to the next thing um it's not like we have a lot of things to do outside the house so it's being right. creative and you never find out what works yeah, and then also learning different ways, uh, like you said, of strategy and marketing, like the old fashioned ways. I mean, you and me, we came up with tapes, going to uh, CDs, going to MP3s, yeah. going to streaming. Going to blogs. So going if to blog, we can yeah. now go on to the next level, we already know how it is to adapt to new technology. So why not use this technology to find a new way of reaching your audience and not even your audience, but also reaching the industry people that you want, you know, the deals with or the collaborations with, like you said, everybody's home. The A&Rs are at home. The publishers are at home. The label folks Everybody. are at home. Everybody. Everyone's at home. Yeah. Yeah. So I've, I've, I've seen my A&R friends holding, holding live uh live demo sessions i've seen it right. i've seen it. and it, it's nothing wrong with it because we, at this point we don't know how we're going to find the next talent because we don't know how long this is, shit is going to last right people are found on instagram so, or youtube so why not why not uh, <laughs> there's been there's been some um discussion about whether to release music or not in this time a lot of artists are putting things on hold and uh, other artists are, are still sticking to their release plan in me personally i feel like Putting out music right now is A, is, is helpful because music heals. And then B, if everybody puts it on hold, now everybody has the time to look for new music. So I would say release music. How are your thoughts on that? My thoughts. Uh, shout out to all the fam in, in the chat room. What are Ricky Waters? Um, my model bomb squad. Everybody, everybody in the building. Um, my, my, my take is this. I understand both sides. Okay, I get it. Um, major artists... Major artists depend on a lot of major platforms to promote their their record yeah. and and get their music out. A lot of major artists they just rely on that. That's what that's what this whole that their whole mantra is built on. So I get it. You know, if I put an album out and I can't do the Tonight Show and I can't do Jay Leno and I can't or whatever, you know what I mean? I can't do all these these different monumental moments. Um, it's kind of a waste to put out my album. But on the second hand, as an independent artist you don't always have those major platforms that you need. And right now your audience is sitting waiting for something new to listen to. So right now to be as being an independent artist, this is a, a great time for you to drop your music as, yeah. as a major artist. I, I get the downfall. I get, I get it as an independent artist. You got to go it. You, yes, I, I would say go I for agree. it, go for what you know, because right now your audience is sitting here waiting and yeah, needing true. something yeah. to entertain them. It's, I see um, both sides. It's your chance to become the soundtrack to Corona time. Um, when you yeah, go yeah. ten years, ten years from now, when people look back at this his historical moment in time, because this will go down in history, the whole world being in the same situation. Who right. are you playing? Whose music? Because right. well, you already know who I've been listening to. This new cat that's around the corner from you. Um, ten years from now, whenever I hear his music, I will think back at this time because this is when I was playing yeah. his album back to back right. on repeat. I can sing along everything, and there will be yeah. other people that I'll be listening to while I'm in the house. So, yeah, you could be as an independent artist, you could be somebody's soundtrack to this time. And yeah, that is exactly. And, yeah, and also as an independent artist, you know things are down right now, but in the future things will be up. So if you have a project that's out now servicing the public for you know for the next two months or whatever and then things open back up by then you're ready to do shows and you got an audience that's right. been hearing this music wanting to yes. see you perform and now you have now you have a fan base to go perform in front of so yeah. it can work both ways as an independent artist as a major artist i understand their flaws you know they put a lot of money in they want a lot of money back they want, lot, they want a guarantee yeah i get it but as an yeah. independent artist man go for it yeah. go for it build your, yeah, build these your ain't, audience Build, your build this audience, man. These DJs, these oh, DJs oh, that are cultivating yeah. albums right now, drop them albums because the, you know yeah. all those artists. You know, I know DJs that are that have been working on albums for the last year or whatever, oh, dealing oh. with different artists and like compilation style. Yeah, that was a good time. Yeah, yeah I like, agree. Yeah, I agree. Go for it's it. uh, it's crazy how so many people can sit at home and be bored when there's just still so much to do. Honestly, if I had the time to be bored, I would learn 
play the guitar. I would get up on my Chinese, which would be helpful in some ways. Um, there's so much that I want to do. I wish I was bored at home, uh, but I guess that's me being a creative person as well. Um, hey, so, me too. You know, at the, at the same time, I, I've been at home like, man, I have so much stuff to do. I don't. Even, I haven't even really had time to even really watch TV yet. I haven't been so. I don't have time to really like binge a show right now. I have to like force myself. So, well, you, you know, know you I, can always watch TV. If this is the time where you have to grab the opportunities for you, then do it. You know, TV will be yeah. TV. In fact, I see people post stuff like they finished Netflix. You don't want to be that person. You want to be that person that still has to catch up on everything. Just, just don't check on the spoilers or something. Yeah. <laughs> they said I finished Netflix. God, leave. I, yeah. I'm sure it's a joke, but I'm sure some people may actually right. have finished Netflix. <laughs> Exactly. It's, uh, yeah, no, not oh, for me. Yeah. Uh, so, okay, let's say worst case scenario, we're all still locked up for the next 12 months. Will you be one of those people that has like literally archives and archives of new music to release? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I definitely will. On, on the point of that, I already, that I'm already sitting on so much stuff. Um, I can cultivate stuff out of what I already have that I'm sitting on. And then in the process of being in this, being creative with and collaborating with my friends, um, we could do we could do whole projects right now. Like right. I think I'm already two pro I'm already two projects in of new stuff that we're creating right now. Then on top of that, um I'm sitting on a whole bunch of music. So twelve months, I would be able to I would be able to drop a project at least every month. If we were locked down for that long. Yeah. Well, I yeah. mean, aren't you then in a position where you're like dropping something and it's going well and then you're eating your own fans with the next project? That's something that I always have to think about with my artists, you know, releasing music. Well, for a producer, I guess it's different. Yeah, it's different. It's yeah. it's not as it's, it's, not it's as, because yeah. it because every every release isn't based on me all the time. Right. Like, it's you have different artists. Some, some really, yeah. Yeah, some some artists are not really under me. Some artists are doing their own thing, but I still work right. with them, and then boom. So yeah, it's it's a little, it's a little different. It's a little right. bit different. So how about international collaborations? Because you and I, you know, behind the scenes have been talking about you know possibly working with people on this side. Because I feel yeah. like your your skills need to be internationally shown yeah. with more artists than just you know where you are. Um, how do you think that we'll still be able to work if we are in the worst case scenario? It's gonna go back to it's gonna go back to that 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 comment of like it's it's hard to work with somebody new for the first time unless you're familiar with their music. So it would it would be it would become a task of me finding out the artists, listening to their music of what they've already right. put out previously, hearing their sound, learning their music, and then creating or cultivating something for them for that. And then we have to just send files back and forth well, if it if it gets that. Would it help to have conversations like this? I mean, not yeah. not in front of an audience, but at least talk to each other and just get to know a person so you kind of know who he, yeah. he or she is. Um, yes. You know, have a few conversations. It's kind of like almost like dating before you start a relationship right. with them. Yeah. And then, you know, then you can work making music based off of how they are and their music. Yeah. And once you learn them as a person work. and... Yeah, and when you learn, you learn what makes them tick and what they relate to. Right. And you can, as a producer, as a good producer, you're able to pull those elements out and then create yeah. something for it. Yeah, that would be that. That can work. That can work. That can still work even if we're on lockdown. Right, because if you if you release music on this side, or wherever side, Asia, Africa, Australia, um, then by the time all the gates are open again, you actually have a fan base already. And you can, oh, yeah, come, right. you know, somewhere you can fl get on the next plane instead of and, then and, start yeah. building. I think this is the time yeah. to build because, again, everybody internationally is also sitting still. It's not just the States or it's not just the Netherlands. True. Everybody has yeah. time to check stuff. And you are, you know, your reputation is pretty dope. So I can only imagine being a young artist over here and day one is hitting me up. Right. Like, that like they, they wouldn't be, you would be too busy doing shit over too there. Too busy to even, even think to even think about something like that. Yeah, yeah. true, very yeah, true. Yeah. So I think. I think. Um, yeah, yeah, I think. I think. Go ahead. I think the most the most important part of that is finding out what artists 
you know, I would I would connect with and then finding out what artists connect to me and then making that marriage work and, and cultivating right. something that's crazy and bananas. Because I feel like right now, I agree with you. Right now is the time to, like, reach out to all of those international connects and see right. what's going on. Because we're all, you know, I talked to I talked to a promoter from Africa the other day, and he wants to book um, a couple of artists that, I'm, that I work with for shows, and he's already talking about, you know, September, October, but really booking a real show. And I'm like, now's the time. Yeah, now's right. the time. Yeah, oh, Monique, my, BTS. <laughs> Monique's in the, Monique said BTS. She is really, she really wants me to work with BTS so bad. But you know what? That's I hilarious. know people that Set it up, produce. Monique. Set it up. Let's do it. I know people that produce and wrote for BTS. And actually, one okay. of them, well, they are in LA. So, um, yeah, it could happen. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, they love it. Uh, I lost my train of thoughts. Oh, yeah. So, how do you usually find new artists to work with do they find you do you come across them how how's your your search for music or how do you come across new people unknown uh talented people that you feel like whoa i want to work with that person you know what um it's a little bit of everything mostly sometimes they find me sometimes i find them it goes either way um a lot of times i meet other talented artists through mutual through mutual friends the and, and mutual like-minded artists. Yeah, yeah, the network kind of starts growing itself to where you work with one artist that's that's super incredible and then they introduce you to another artist that they think is super incredible. So that kind of always ups it up a notch. Um, sometimes I find raw talent, like I find raw talent online, Instagram, uh, YouTube, sometimes just listening to other people, other people records and seeing, reading the credits to see who did what. You find other people where you, right. where you get knowledge about who else is doing their thing at the time? And you're kind of like, okay, I like I like what they're doing, and you know, you reach out. Um, I've met a lot of a lot of other producers, a lot of other artists, mainly through other artists and, and other producers. Like, right. you know, Just it's it's kind of like a, 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 a it's like a tight knit family of like people that are dope introduce you to other dope people. Yeah, and then it just true. starts growing. You know, you work with one dope person, and they introduce you to this other dope artist, and then boom, and it just it's a snowball effect. So, so we all you, hang you can't out really not. Yeah, I mean, you can't really knock how you meet somebody. It's just kind of like one of them things, like, it can come from any any angle. So I never really shunned away from meeting somebody in a particular manner. I do shun away from um, a lot of unsolicited work. Like, for me, I don't really like working with certain people that just come to me out of nowhere, out of the blue. And, like, right. I don't have no way to do no background or no research on you, no – I don't have no knowledge of you as your character, as what kind of person you are. So sometimes I stray away from a lot of unsolicited work. Like you got to pretty much come to me through someone or I have to seek you out. Oh, wow. If I seek you out, it's different. Yeah. If I seek you out, if I'm like, yo, you're, right. you're dope. Yo, hit me up. Let's work. Let's do something. Cool. But if you just kind of like hit me up out of the blue and you're like, Hey man, I want to work with you. It's kind of like, yeah, but who do I know that you know that, that I know a lot. to where I can verify yeah. who you are? Yeah, because a lot of times you got to verify who somebody is sometimes. And no, I always and it's not to say that they're... Is. Yeah, because it's not to say that there's somebody shady. It's just to say That's something like, point. you know... <laughs> no, it's not that. It's, it's just based it's on... It's your time as well. Um, it's your time and your reputation. It's your time and your reputation. Because if I start working with you and I, and I like what we're doing and we're doing something good and I start introducing you to some other people and then you turn around and do some fuck shit, then I'm, I'm going to look bad. They're going to be like, yo, who's this guy you introduced me to? And I'm going to be like, yeah. oh, I don't know. I met him on the, inter on the internet. Like, no, nah, you got to kind of, <laughs> you got to come through me. <laughs> you got to kind of come through me through somebody else. I've even told people that. Like, yo, okay, cool. I like your sound, but, you know, have somebody you know that I know vouch for you and tell me and tell me. And depending on that person and how I value their opinion and who they are will determine how, how I'll treat our dynamic right. of our relationship. Yeah. I have to say that um, uh, there's only a few people that can bring people to me that I instantly know are good because of who's bringing them to me. Um, right. You, you, you know, automatically you just know. You automatically know. You could have killed your mama for all I care. But if, if somebody's bringing you to me, then that must mean that that was for a reason or you are full of remorse, or you're on the on yeah. end, or, you know, so there's only a handful of people that can do that with me. Um, and even they can make mistakes. You know, I've made a lot of mistakes. Right. I, I was always too nice in this industry. Boy, did I learn, you know. Um, sometimes you just got to learn the hard way and get burned a couple of times. 
Um, but that's part of the industry. Um, so people, yeah. when you hit up day one to work with him, make sure that there's a background check available or that you <laughs> please have check. some links to some credible work and, you know, cause I guess. Yeah. I mean, it, and sometimes, and sometimes it's not, sometimes it's not even as important as somebody bringing you to me, but if you're an artist and I see you work with someone that I know or that I worked with before, if I'm interested in working with you, best believe me and that person that I know that you know will have a conversation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah of course. I have True. to because it's too much on the line. It's too, it's too much, you know, the, just too much online. So it's too much of a risk to just yeah. not be careless and just be like, you know, you have to like do your due diligence because, you know, it's, you can't. Yeah, it's not about skipping the line, but it's more or less about um, the morality of the, of the person or the artist you're dealing with. Yes. Like, who are they? Yeah, and what they represent. No, because we might not represent the same thing. Yeah. And if we don't oh, yeah, represent so the same thing, if, it's cool. We just won't work. If you, come, if you come across people on this side, I know you always ask me, like, do you know this person? Do you know that person? And um, yeah. I don't know everyone, but maybe I do, and I can tell you something about them. Or maybe I've heard of them. Right. Because um, I do know right. there's a couple of people that are, are, that are willing to work with you on this side. Um, so we're going to have to, at some point, make that happen. But you're already full booked. With yeah, and, see, and, if you, and, you, and if you come to me and, you, and you're like, yo, Dave, I got this person who's dope over here, but I'm going to yeah. be like, okay, let's hear it. Let's set it up because of who right. you are. So it makes sense to me. And yeah. it goes both ways. If I bring somebody to you, I'm pretty sure you're going to be like, is this person cool with Dave? And I'll be like, yeah. And you'll be like, all yeah. right, whatever, what, what we need to do yeah, because like of who I am. So I, like little homie from England. Yeah. Yeah. He seems yeah, and he was respectful clear. too. Oh. It's um, what I've learned in, in, in this industry. People approach me a lot with emails or DMs or whatever on check me out. And it's the way yeah. so you can be working with the biggest stars. You can be talented as what if you do not talk to me proper and approach me on a professional level, I cannot fuck with you. I just cannot. I don't care who you work with. Um, I understand. You could be you could be Obama's daughter. If you come at me on some wrong in some wrong way, I cannot work with you because it shows that makes sense the, though. It shows the respect they have for you approaching you already. There's no introduction, there's no name, there's no um, you know, talking about who I am, like how did you find me or what do you think of, of me? No, it's just hey, check yeah. my shit out. Who are you? Yeah. I got time for that. What what do you think I'm sitting here doing nothing? It's so insulting. <laughs> Anybody got time for that? I'm I mean, quarantining, but I'm doing etiquette. something, damn it. <laughs> it's, it's etiquette. I wrote an article about it. And I, it, at first, when people approach me like that, I just sent the link to them. I stopped doing that even. <laughs> yeah, it's a respect. You stop? Yeah. Yeah, it's all about respect. You know, and for you, you you're being, you being a woman in this industry, I'm, I'm sure it's, it's even extra more precautious. So, you know, that's it not was, an easy It just... was really bad when I was younger. But I have to, yeah. I have to say now that you know, for people that don't know me, I've been in this in this industry for twenty years. Um, when I started, it was weird for me navigating because you don't want to come off too harsh. So it's, it's it's a whole way of conducting yourself as a woman, especially in the hip hop urban industry. Um, yeah, but now yeah. that I'm older, I think it's my demeanor. Because uh, a lot of my male friends also told me that, hey, yeah, you, the, the people won't do that to you. Like, uh, one of the things is I yeah. never get penis pictures, ever. Right. And I don't understand why women get those. But then my friends tell me, because you don't come across as somebody that would appreciate that. And I'm happy that I don't come across like that. So it is, it, it has, has to do with how you carry yourself. <laughs> But also, I, I've earned the respect, man. I got 20 years in this game. Like, yeah, don't yeah. come at me that way. <laughs> and you know a lot of people. Like, you know a lot of people. So for someone to be like, oh, I need to do my background check on pay, it's going to come back really fast. <laughs> I don't so, know. I mean, it's gonna be like, yeah, yeah, I feel you. I feel you. But, but we, still. I think we met, it, through, we met through mutual friends in the industry, right? I can't yeah, remember how we yeah. met. Yeah. So we did. We, met. we go way back to, like, we were kids. Yeah. We were kids. Yeah, for real. Damn. And that's yeah, Crazy. that's the thing. Like yesterday after my talk with um with Four Eyes, the rapper, uh, a lot of people came at me in my inbox asking me, so 
where are you at? And do you have a boyfriend? And I was laughing at it, but people thought it was from Atlanta because, you know, Four Eyes in Atlanta. And I'm like, oh, oh yeah, that's yeah, yeah. him. And, he imme and they immediately were like, okay, have a nice day. <laughs> it was so funny. Um, Ain't nobody got so time for that. Like, hell no, you, you're too and far. And people, that's people funny. see who I all know, they automatically think I'm from the States. No, I am not. I am from Amsterdam, yeah. born and raised, and my native language is Dutch, but I just, you know, I've, I've, I've earned my stripes. I've worked hard. I've, you know, hustled my way in yeah. this industry. You pay these dues. You pay these dues. I paid my dues, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Pay your so, dues, um, for real. What is, what is next for you um, as soon as the gates are open? What, is, what are your plans? Man, you mean like what's the first thing I want to do when everything's back to normal? I don't I'm know, not man. Speaking Dutch like, in here, Alvin. I'm sorry, I'm not speaking Dutch in here. <laughs> <laughs> no, Dutch. Then the, it'll clear out this whole live stream if I start speaking Dutch. Everybody will leave. Um, yes. You know what though? The I don't. I don't know. I think the first thing for me is going to be. Uh, I want, I'm definitely going to have to go to some kind of an event. Like, I'm going to need to get out and just... You're going to get straight uh, from it going out. to the first event where everybody is. <laughs> yeah, I want to... Well, it won't be the first event. I'm, I'm one of those people that pulls up to the stoplight, and when it turns green, I kind of wait a second and let everybody else start going. Then I'll drive. Right. So, it's the same effect. When it, when this thing is lifted, I'm going to be like, yeah, y'all go ahead and keep going. I'm going to just wait a little bit. I'll probably wait like a week. I'll, yeah, I'll get on a plane, come to Europe. Well, it, it probably won't even be the first week. It'll probably be like, hold on. Actually, it's probably safer. You guys are safer than we are right now. We are. Like, I, honestly, I, I think that we're going to be playing outside when y'all are still locked down because y'all spreading yeah, fire probably each other. So, yeah, yeah you guys are pretty you're much. You're safer out here. Yeah, you guys are pretty much uh, way safer than we are right now. We 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 are we are getting hit the worst right We got it the worst right now, worse than everybody had it. So, you yeah, know, we, but, we still may be. Well, what's crazy out here is that when I, when I saw the numbers and the numbers are only relative because they don't test out here. So uh, the numbers from my country may not be actual factual. Um, but yeah. what I have seen from the numbers is that um, they say that the coronavirus kills about two to 3% of the, the, the people infected. And over here, it's been 10%. And I know it's it's mostly elderly people, and we do have a lot of, uh, you know, our population consists of a lot of old people. But still, that's scary. If it's ten percent versus the regular two or three percent, and my country's yeah. small, so when right. the, you know once it spreads, I'm in the, I'm in Amsterdam. This is the biggest, you know, this is the yeah. New York of of you guys. So that's why I'm staying inside. And um, yeah, my little talk. <laughs> It's the worst. Um, shout out to the homie. In the, he said, "Drop something on Carte." Um, Carte Carte Blanche is one of my artists. We just we just finished his album. His album just got mastered. The master just came back, so he will be dropping within the next month or so. Oh, so cool. his album's done. It's about to come out. Yeah, somebody was asking me in the comment. Um, yeah, that's fine. That's if crazy. there are any questions other yeah. than me speaking Dutch, I'm not speaking <laughs> Dutch. Um, yeah, do you have anything else to 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 give out to the people uh, as far as motivational? I don't know. Man, at, at this point, if you want to work, hit me up. Like we ain't really doing too much. If I like what you do. Let's work. Let's do something respectfully, with all due respect. You know what I'm saying? Like um, right now, I just want to leave people with with the notion of of you know, don't forget. Now is the time to double up and do your research, study a little bit, watch some documentaries. Um, learn about the craft of what you do, whether it's DJing, MC, graffiti, breakdancing, whatever it is, you know, don't forget to get your workout in, do your little workout in the day, and you know what I mean, in the daytime, stay healthy, stay oh, safe, stay like in the house. Yeah, man, you know, yeah, get, yeah, get that heart rate going, get that heart rate pumping, and um, you know, um, other than that, man, I'm going to see y'all when all this is lifted, and I can't wait till everything gets back to normal, but until then, right. new music is on the way. Yes, and um, for those who are still tuned in, I might do follow-ups with all these people if this takes longer than we all hope, because it'll be great to see what everybody else has been up to uh, a couple weeks or a couple months from now, even if we're still in this situation, God forbid. Um, yeah. Thank you so much, Day One. Uh, where can people hit you up? Where can they find you? 
Well, they definitely can follow my Instagram right now. If you don't follow me now, go to Instagram and follow me right now. That's day underscore one, D-A-E underscore O-N-E. Um, they can also hit me up on uh, Twitter. I'm at day one on Twitter. And uh, SoundCloud. My SoundCloud is day one. I'm mad people still there. use Twitter. I love Twitter, man. You can say whatever you want and post whatever you want. They don't censor you. That's what I love about Twitter. There's no censorship. It's not a censorship. I, lo I it love that. It's, that. I think that they're really based on freedom of speech. Yeah, look at Trump. Um, so, <laughs> he'd be loving Twitter. That's like where you get your news from him. Um, okay, on that note, again, thank you so much. Uh, it's great to see that you're still being creative, and we're looking forward to seeing all the new music and the releases from you and your artists. And hopefully we'll be able to welcome you on this side of the Atlantic anytime soon. Um, so we can spread the day one sound over here as well. And thanks everyone for tuning in. Stay safe, stay healthy, wash your hands. And, Thank you, everybody. Uh, six feet. Stay six feet away from each other. Six feet. And six feet. I'll be back tomorrow with another artist. Um, that's going to be Ivy oh, Chanel. Oh. She is the sister of DJ Cash Money. Might be interesting because she does a lot too. So tune in tomorrow. See you later, Dave. Dope. See you later, Pay. Take it easy.